Hi everyone, today I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to work with black and white images in OM Systems Workspace. It is a free photo editing software that you can download from the OM System website if you have an Olympus camera or an OM Systems camera. Uh, it's actually a very powerful software uh, for photo editing. It has lots and lots of tools and you can do all kinds of creative things with it. I'd say really the only two uh, limitations or weaknesses of the software is one, you really can't do any kind of local adjustments. So if you want to like uh, bring down the brightness of the sky or pull up shadows just on a particular area in the image, uh, that's going to be very difficult to do in own workspace, if not impossible. And then the second weakness really is with the speed of the software. Um, it can take a very long time to process changes, uh, particularly if you have an older machine. So you're going to have to be very patient with it, but in the end, I think you can get excellent results. Now, this is not a full-on tutorial on how to use OM Workspace. I'm just going to be focusing on the tools for black and white photography. Uh, and I've cherry-picked some images here to kind of go through the different kinds of images and different ways to process them and why. So let's look at the tools panel. Uh, basically, we have our cropping tool, which I'll be using. Uh, we're going to definitely be using the editing panel here, which has uh, our picture mode where we can select monochrome. We're also going to be using this adjust color panel here. Uh, this gives you actually a lot more control over your black and white images uh, for everything. And then, of course, clarity, dehaze, definitely the tone curve, uh, possibly highlights and shadows, contrast. So just about everything here in the editing panel can be used for your black and white photography. We're also going to be applying some art filters, color filters, and adjusting vignette. And then finally, uh, we're going to be uh, adjusting for sharpness and also using the unsharp mask. Now, as far as the types of images I'll be going through, I'm going to be looking at some low key images and portraits, also some landscapes in both uh, sort of a regular tone and then also in high key and then some other miscellaneous images here as well. So let's start with this very simple image so it's easier to see how these tools affect it. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is we'll just do a conversion to monochrome. And basically all that does is subtract all of the color. Under the monochrome we have some different filters. And what these filters do is basically uh, brighten the color that you select. So if there's any greens in the image, it'll brighten those. If there's any reds, it'll brighten those. And oranges and yellows and so on. Neutral, it doesn't do anything. So let me put this side by side, the before and after. So really, there's no greens in this image, right? So if I select green, it's going to have very, very little impact because there's really nothing to brighten, right? However, if I select red, you'll notice right away that these leaves are a little bit brighter because there's a lot of red in these leaves, right? And then orange will have a little bit less effect than red. And then yellow has even less effect. Now the picture tone basically puts a tint on the overall image. So if we want sepia, you know, it applies a sepia tint or a blue tint, purple, and green, right? I guess this is to emulate different uh, black and white processing methods from the day. I don't know what they are, but that, that's the idea. Uh, but they can also be used creatively, of course. The next one here is clarity. And this basically is a contrast slider. And the net result is you basically can see more details. Uh, and it brings out more of the highlights, essentially. So like these little stones and leaves are a little bit brighter with a lot of clarity or if I reset this back to zero you can see it's a little bit softer and if we go negative clarity it reduces the contrast to the point that everything starts to look a bit, little bit soft although there is still plenty of detail. Dehaze is another contrast type slider the idea of trying to reduce uh, contrast in foggy areas. Now there's no fog in this but I like to use dehaze on a lot of my black and white images because they give a very contrasty look to the image. So you can see it sort of cut through the very, very light haze that was in the water so that you could see the streets. So when I crank the dehaze all the way up, it's almost like you can't see the water here anymore. Um, and then of course, if we go negative dehaze, 
it's going to lower the contrast and also make the image look very, very soft and more foggy, right? Because the idea of dehaze is to try to reduce fog. So negative dehaze is going to add fog. Now the tone curve, I have a whole video on how to use this tone curve, but I'll give you the crash course here. Uh, basically all your dark areas of the image are down here and all your bright images are up here. And this is a linear curve, meaning it's not making any changes uh, from the original image in terms of brightness or darkness. And as I move my mouse over the image, you'll see a little blue dot bouncing around here. So you can see the blue dot's very high on the line there. So these are the brighter parts of the image. And then if I go over here, you can see these are the darker parts. So if I wanted to affect, say, just the brightest part of the image, I'm going to grab that part of the line that has the blue dot, which in this case was about right here. So if I pull this up, or I'm sorry, it's going to brighten up primarily the leaves, but you can see that the line is flexible, right? It curves. So if I want to bring the rest of the image back down, I can bring it back down to the line. And now, the leaves are primarily the only brighter thing in the scene than before. So if I turn this off and then turn this back on, you can see that the leaves got a little bit brighter. And this curve sort of creates a little bit more contrast as well. If I wanted to pull the shadow areas down more, uh, as you can see where the blue line is, or the blue dot on that line, I'm going to grab right in here and just pull it down. And that should darken most of the image without affecting sort of the mid-tones and highlights here. So that's what the tone curve does. All right, the highlight and shadow is essentially the same thing as the tone curve, but it's a more coarse way to do it. So I can pull the shadows down like so, and then I can push the highlights. And this may be a good way to start using tone curves rather than manipulating it directly yourself. But I like to work with the tone curve because I get a lot more control than I can with just using these uh, the very basic sliders. All right, and then contrast is pretty straightforward. We basically increase the contrast. And this is going to vary depending if it's a raw image or a JPEG image. In this case, I'm working with a JPEG, so the contrast slider has a bigger range. And then saturation, intuitively, you would think this has no effect, but Remember that the underlying image is a full color image. So if I increase the saturation, uh, it's going to saturate the colors more, thereby effectively making them darker. And then if I go negative, it's going to make the image a little bit brighter. So let's turn that off. Now, I almost never use this uh, when I'm doing my editing for black and white. Uh, I actually use um, this adjust color wheel, and I'll show you how to do that. This will give you a lot more control over your black and white images. In most cases, there are some exceptions. And then finally, gradation is uh, also sort of a way to affect the tone curve. They're basically presets. Uh, right now, it's set to uh, auto. So what, what the gradation is doing, the auto gradation is trying to balance the highlights and the shadows and give you a little bit flatter image. Um, and it's just whatever algorithm that they have. Or you can do this manually where you really want to try to balance the highlights and shadows. So it's raising the shadows and pulling the highlights versus if we turn it off, this is the original image. I usually just leave this turned off. Now, one of the quirks when working with OM Workspace is that uh, it will take the settings that you had in your camera and apply them to the raw images if you're shooting in raw. So, for example, if I'm shooting in black and white with raw images uh, and I import that, it's going to import as a black and white image. I can change it back to color because I shot in raw, but it's going to, by default, the settings in the editing panel are going to be set to monochrome. Uh, another example would be like the highlights and shadows. Most of our Olympus cameras, OM system cameras, can be, you can adjust the highlights and shadows, and it's going to import those settings with the raw image. So sometimes I have to go in and reset those when I'm doing my editing. And I'll let you know when I do that. Uh, it'll be obvious. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and start editing some images using the uh, editing uh, tools that we have in that panel. All right, now when I look at an image uh, for black and white, I basically consider three things. And you've probably heard of TTL before, uh, which stands for through the lens metering uh, for flash and things. But when I think about TTL for images, I think about uh, tones, textures, and lines. And it's just an easy way for me to remember it. So in this image, I have some very light tones up here, some very dark tones in here, and some mid-tones in here. So this is the tonal range of the image. And then I look at texture, right? So we have brickwork here, which has some nice texture in it, but really not much else. And then we also have uh, lines. And architectural type images are always going to have lines in them, right? We have a line here and a line going across here and everywhere. So these are the three elements for black and white that I consider when I start editing. And what I want to do first is the tones are, are a little bit flat. So I want to create a lot of drama here and create a very uh, high dynamic range type scene. So I'm going to be uh, stretching the tones, meaning crushing the blacks and raising the highlights. But first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and just convert this to monotone or black and white. And then uh, there's really not much color in this scene, but if I pick the red filter, it may bring the tone of the bricks down just a little bit darker. Yeah, it really didn't do anything. So we'll leave that alone. Uh, and then from here, I'll go to clarity and let's just bring out a little bit more detail. And again, this is all very, very subjective, right? Uh, let's use the dehaze. This is a, another way to work with contrast in the image. Yeah, that's getting there. Maybe a little bit more. All right. And then uh, I'm going to go right to the tone curve. And I'm going to pull. I usually like to start with the shadow areas and just kind of pull these down. And then uh, it's a little bit too dark up in here, so I'm going to pull these up a little bit. So these tones are roughly in this area. Okay, that's looking good. Uh, let's pull up the, the blacks. And I, you know, you'll get a feel for this. You just have to practice when you're working with the tone curve but I feel that's pretty good. And uh, I don't think I need to do anything else here. All right, we're almost done. I'm just gonna apply some effects here. So let's go to the effects panel, go to the art filter, and you can try all these different ones, but I'm just gonna apply a vintage. And you just have to be a little careful because sometimes these filters can, can add color to the image. I mean, there's a workaround for that, which I'll talk about maybe in another video, but that didn't do anything, right? But in the effects uh, button here, I can add a little bit of vignette, this pinhole effect. I can also add a frame. And then I can also add a little bit of a blur effect. And I'm going to blur the left and right side of this image. And then I'm just going to click apply. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a warm color filter. So we need to increase the level just to give it kind of a sepia look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now in this image, I followed almost the exact same process as I did on the previous image. So I convert it to monotone. Uh, I adjust the clarity and the haze. And then I also messed with the tone curve to kind of bring all of these uh, mid-tones down to almost black. And then I went into the effects panel here and applied the same Vintage 3 filter, but this time I did not apply the pinhole effect because it was vignetting a little bit too heavy and blocking the screen. So I didn't do it here, but I did apply blur effect because I wanted to add some depth to the image. So I was able to blur out this screen and blur out the uh, speaker back here instead of it being almost uh, pin sharp here. And then I applied a color filter as before, but instead of a warm color, I applied dark red. 
And then this is where I adjusted the uh, vignette manually, just ever so slightly to just bring the corners in uh, to make them completely black. Now let's look at more of a landscapey type picture. You know, we have the uh, mountain here with a barn. And uh, here, again, just a monotone filter, some dehaze, and then an adjustment to the tone curve. And then on the effects panel, all I did was adjust vignettes, so I didn't apply any um, color. Now this image kind of lent itself to be a high key image because I overexposed it by one stop uh, because I wanted to make sure I captured all of the uh, textures and details in the wood and the grass, etc. And for post-processing, I didn't do much here. Um, basically, I just converted the monotone and added some contrast and then I could do a little bit on the tone curve here uh, maybe just push the highlights a little bit more and then pull the shadows in just a little bit to give it a little more bite and then for the effects panel all I did was just add this uh, white vignette by going in the positive direction instead of negative because a dark vignette would, wouldn't look right so I went with a white vignette. Now I wanted to show you one more technique, and this is a little bit advanced, but instead of, say, doing just monochrome, for example, and then maybe trying to apply a filter like red or green, there's another way you can work with the colors uh, individually. So let's let's go back to just no effect i'm working with a tiff file so that's why there's no like color profiles there let's go into adjust color and go to saturation we have all colors checked and just click in the center here to desaturate everything now there's still a little bit of green left in here so what i'm going to do is uh, go down here and just fully desaturate the image and now we have a full on monochrome right now go over here to luminance and I'm going to check all colors and I'm just going to maximize everything and just make everything super bright now I can uncheck this and now I can work with the individual tones in the petals so I can pull in maybe some reds that didn't do much let's go a little bit higher Okay, now the reds in here have been pulled in a little bit. Let's try orange. Okay, and let's do yellow. All right, that's too much. So I can, I can back off the yellows a little bit and maybe a little bit on the oranges. That might be too much for my taste. Let's do this right there. And then uh, I think these are greens, so let's uh, let's try pulling in some of the greens. There, there we go. Maybe these greens as well. But this just gives you another way to work with your black and whites, and then of course you can. Uh, do all your other normal stuff with the tones and clarity like so and we'll just add a vignette this way now using this technique of working with the color wheel and adjusting the luminance of the individual colors uh, it doesn't work with every image, and it's going to take some practice, but it is a very advanced technique for fine-tuning your black and white images to get that exact look that you want. And that's all I have for today. If you found this video helpful, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below because they're greatly appreciated and they help me to continue making videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.